Hello and welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriks and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at drawing line graphs. So there may be many other ways to draw uh, different graphs and there generally exist very many of them. But today we're just going to focus on a very simple line graph. We have to start somewhere, right? And to illustrate today's example, I have now made use of some one of the built-in data sets. You can do it yourself you're at home. And uh, what it is, it's the US life expectancy data. So let's load it in first and see what we are dealing with. So opening up the data set here, we see we have a nice year variable. That's going to come in handy. We have life expectancy and then for different subgroups of people, male, female, and so forth. We're going to take it nice and easy here and just focus on one of them mostly, but just to illustrate what we're dealing with. So it goes from 1900 up until 1999, last time I checked. That is correct. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to try to make a nice self-contained graph so it will, will look nice. And there are many ways to go about this. So let's first settle a few things. One way we could just make a very simple one is to use the two-way command. So write two-way line, then we already have the starting command. So remember, we're putting everything in a do file as usual. So you can just copy the code and then, well, you have it for always. And many of the things that we show here is very useful for other types of graphs. So it's very good to start with a line graph. So we put up first, what do we want to graph? We want to graph the life expectancy. And just for the first illustration, we're also going to add in life expectancy of male, life expectancy of female. And then of course we have to delegate the last one to say, what is going to be the say uh, axis here? So in our case, there'll be year, they'll be acting as the X axis. So this year should, should <laughs> emphasis on should, draw a nice little graph for us. It does, but it comes up on the other screen. So we're just going to fly it in right here. And you see a nice base graph, three different colors, as you could expect. So let's first settle a few things before we start making this graph, well, fancier, because we can do a lot of nice things with this graph. So what we could do is we can use two-way line, or we can also TS set year so we're telling this is a say a time series data set we can do it with ts set because then we can make use of the two-way ts line package instead so the thing is some people may ask when do i use line when do i use ts line and in general speaking you should use ts line when you just have a time series data so no panel so that means for instance if i would add in all these variables again le male le female and so forth it's not really, say, suitable for this, but it would work. But if you start doing too fancy things, it would not. So here you can see it still generates a very nice graph. It looks very much the same. The only difference here is because I TS set the data, I don't need to write year at the end. And that I think is very nice. But we can also just use it only for the TS line. So we don't need to basically have the two way in front. And then we're just gonna do TSLE. We're gonna keep this very short, as you can see. So shorthand, we'll make it look like this. And this will be our starting graph right now. So we can try and start with this and see if we can make it better, so to speak. And uh, as you can see again, we can use TS line, we could use line. We use TS line now because we just got a single time series data set. I've used TS set to set it in as a time series. We have another video on that if you haven't forgotten so or haven't checked it out already. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to use a lot of options. And we're gonna go through and built on this level by level. So we can simply first copy this down and then we're just gonna extend this with all the options after the comma, of course, as we go along. So first we start with all the titling. Let's work with that. So first we can add some titles to the axis. We can add an overall title. So the sub command here, the option is rather Y title. Many of these things are say, you know, self-explanatory and quite logical. So we can put in a title and of course, remember your quotation marks because this is basically a string. So we can put in a call this life expectancy. Yes, you can already say, if you remember the graph from a moment ago, it already said so. But just suppose you want to call something else rather than the default, then this command will show you. So we can call it something else than life expectancy if you wanted to. And you probably already guessed it, it will be X title for the other side of it. And here we can write years rather than the standard year. And finally for here, we can also do some title. That will be the overall title of the thing. So we can call it, what do we actually call it? Just life expectancy? Yeah, might as well just call life expectancy again. 
not here to put the perfect names. And we can also put a subtitle. So basically, just like you see in a journal article, you've got a nice title and then a nice little subtitle below it. And of course, you may have guessed it, subtitle. And of course, spelling is, I still haven't learned it, but uh, we'll get there. And of course, we can say from 1900 to 1999. So this will be our first, say, iteration of an improved graph. So let's see if it works. So see, we already got somewhere. It doesn't look too bad. We had some titling and some stuff like that. But let's uh, work a little more with the axis, because now comes what I think is very neat. And of course, I'm going to show only some of the things here, because there are endless amount of different options. And uh, well, we don't have time for all of them, of course. So let's go on to the next bit. So I'm just going to do this step by step and copy it down. That means you can also say you can follow this as we go along. So now we're just going to add in, let's see, we're going to work with the Y axis and X axis with some ticks and labels. So what we can do here is we can add in some ticks. And these are just some old ticks you see along the line. And of course, you may have guessed it, why tick is a thing to do. And this is going to remind a lot when we did loops back in the days, you have to specify where do we start with the ticks. Since we know the data starts at 1900, it would be smart to do 1900. Then we can say how often should the ticks increase in this case here. And then we can move it upwards as we go along. And uh, why tick 1900? That may actually be the x-axis, so that sounds a little bad. So if I remember my line from earlier, it started at 40 because the lowest life expectancy was 40-something years back in 1900. And then, of course, it ended up to 80. Have we got a new data set that was, say, a little newer, the life expectancy would also be expected, well, <laughs> to be higher. So we can do y tick, and then we can do y label. Y label is basically how we label it with the numbers. So again, we can start at 40 as the lowest label. Instead of having a label every single time, we can put a label with every five, again, up till 80. And now we can do it for the x axis, so that'll be the x tick. And this time we can start with 1900. We're gonna go for the tick for, say, every year. Then you get a nice little condensed or makes very, looks very snug. And then we can do for the x label as well. So for the label, we again start with 1900. And let's see, we get a label every 10 years. Or suppose we do it every five years, just for illustration, because then we can actually illustrate something that is very interesting, I think. So this hopefully should produce the graph. Then we're gonna go for the next graph. And now you see, oh, that doesn't look too well, right? And then there's simply just not enough space. It's all scattered on top of each other or lumped together. So one thing you could do, we could increase this one here, or we can try and add an option within the option to angle the text 45 degrees, say, see if that would actually do something. So if we do it like that, oh, then actually we angle the text to make space for it. And it looks really nice. Like it's up to you ultimately whether you want it every five years, the labels, but now just, just to show you could actually just angle the text to make it look very nice. You can of course also experience with, uh, experiment with this yourself to see how all these functions work or all these options. So that should actually go for this next part. Then of course we can move forward and see what we get to next time. So now we're gonna add in, I don't like my blue line say, I wanna get a red line because that was what I originally had when I had all three things in there. So we can simply just add in the next one, which is L color. Many of these things make sense, as you can see. And then we want, of course, red. We can, of course, at the same time, also add a pattern, although I'm fine with a solid line, but we can also just do L pattern and then say we want a dot line. I'm gonna remove it in the moment because I don't think it looks very nice here, if I remember correctly. You see, you've got a dotted line here. That's not really what I want, but just to showcase that we could do dots. I believe you can also dashes dash dot and many other things. So for the time being, we're just gonna put it as a comment. That means we leave it there so you know how it looks, but it's not gonna read it if I then draw the graph. Let's see illustration. See, we're back at the red line from before. No problem. But now, as any good graph that's self-contained, you need to tell where your data is from. And we can do that by adding a captation or a note. And I'm gonna show you the difference between the two because uh, in essence, yeah, you can choose what you like, and they don't make too much difference, but I thought I would show you both of them. So let's start with the captation. So we write simply just here, captation or caption. Sorry, why do I call it captation? It's called caption. It is um, all these things I'm not very good at, as you can see. 
So we got data here, so we can call it, uh, where do we get it from actually? It's an example data set installed in Stata, so we can just call it example data set installed, installed with Stata. That seems like a good idea. Notice here, we do not need the quotation marks and uh, you can always experiment with it when you need it when you don't. But you can see it comes here, data. Example data set installed with Stata. Not too shabby, I would say, not too shabby. But what about the note version of this? So I can do the same. And then instead of caption, see, I learned, then we can do note instead and see, you know, what actually that gives us. And uh, what you're gonna notice is they're very similar. It seems like they produce exactly the same thing. However, note becomes smaller. So note will indicate it's a smaller text and I preferably just like note. But what you can also do is simply within this note option, add in comma and use the size option. So you can size it 0, 80%. So like this, then I'll actually size the text even further down. So you see it becomes really small now. That's very strange actually, so you wouldn't want that. But you can also make it a lot bigger if you like. So you can size up 125. Then you can actually just try the different sizes. So you can see it's installed what kind of sizes with the font size. It's just like you have in Word. So now it's font size 125 and you can simply just size it up as you go. And then you can simply just see if you put 425, for example, it's gonna come up with a much larger size. And you can experiment whatever you like. So that's also, it gives you a lot of customization. So I'm just gonna leave it here at say, size four, that's fine. That seems like an okay size. We can also just trial run it again because why not? That seems okay. Although I'll prefer just honestly have no size and keep with the standard for the note. So finally, what can we do? If you looked at this here, there's some interesting things going on in life expectancy, of course. And we saw if we don't remember or if we remember correctly, there's been quite a dump around here. And for people who know their history lessons, this is around the time of the Great War or also known as World War I. And of course, what we could do here, we can try and draw some vertical lines and simply mark with a text on the dot that this is World War I. So let's try that out. I think this is uh, really cool. You can do so many nice things with this. So we're gonna push this up here. We're gonna note this for the next thing here. And what can we do? So we need what we, something is called T-line. T-line is basically just drawing sublines on the plot here. So all we have to do is tell where at which x-axis point do we want them? We want at 1914, because I remember my history, and then I look at my notes because I forgot when it ended, because sometimes I think it's 1919, but it's actually 1918. I believe it ended in November that year. So close, but you have to be precise, right? So this is where we're gonna draw the two lines. And more importantly, we also need to draw when or what pattern they should have, because I don't want just straight lines again. So I want an L pattern here, L pattern, pattern there. And I want this to be dashed lines. I think that is much better. So we put dash in here and then we close all the parentheses that we need to close, one, two. So you always need to make sure that it counts up. So we have two one way and two the other way. So that should of course be something. So we can put in the dash lines. That's a good start. And now finally we can put in some text. For text, we need to know where's the position of the text. And uh, well, that's hopefully not too bad. So again, here we put in a command or a box that's called T text. And back is here, we have to tell where. And first you have to tell where for the Y axis. So we want it in the height of 75. That seems high enough, but you can always try a little lower or higher again if you want. And then we have to see at what X points. I'm just gonna put it in the middle, 1916. And then we can put in the text. And here we need our quotation marks. So World War I, we can also write the Great War. That sounds also much cooler. And of course we can look at the placement because where do I want it? I want it to be in the center for this here. So just the word center will start there. If we don't do it, it will start the word in 1916 and go to the right. But now I want the center of the word to be placed right there. And then finally we can put in a color of this. We can make it blue, we can make it red, we can make it black, we can make it white, although that wouldn't get us anywhere because you wouldn't be able to see it, but just to give you an idea. So you see here, whoa, this looks nice. We got World War One. Maybe you can size the text a little to make it clearer, but the idea is certainly there. And you can see, starting from the graph we had, we really got far just by building 
piece by piece. And remember, you can use this for many of the other graph packages in Stata, but this is just to showcase how you can do it with just the TS line or just regular line, because many of these options are exactly the same. That was a longer one today, but I hope you learned something in Stefan's classroom, and I hope to see you back for another class in Stefan's classroom. Bye-bye. Thank <music> you.